the Salvadorans made Bitcoin legal tender. Salvadorans are the beacon of free speech. The Statue of Liberty is now a volcano in El Salvador. Let me tell you something. You don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. You've got to come to the Bitcoin side. You've got to get in line. You've got to bend the knee. It's a rough world. Bitcoin fixes this. It demonetizes violence. We are now launching the St. B rocket into Bitcoin and hyperspace. You're gonna be slaying crypto aliens with G. Yes. Taking off our spaceship, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be landing in galaxies where we need to be chopping these fake BTC aliens. <laughs> yes, these crypto pretenders. <laughs> There's a lot of those. There sure are. We have to say that this Nashville conference has officially put Bitcoin into the mainstream. Yeah. When Donald Trump and RFK and Vivek Ramaswamy and Kathy Wood from ARK Invest and all these mainstream BlackRock players are pumping and shilling crypto. You got to know it's in the mainstream. This is what everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. We want Bitcoin to be mainstream. Yeah. We want everybody to be buying Bitcoin because then we will be rich yeah. and we will be free. Yeah. Free of the man. All of these promises that seems a little bit out of touch with the reality of how money moves. Absolutely. There's a lot to say about being in touch and out of touch with crypto. And this is the show that is going to be awakening people. It's yeah. going to be smartening them up. So are you ready to dive in cage and uh, spread some Bitcoin knowledge on the people? Gee, I'm ready. All right, cool. Well, let's dive into this latest and greatest episode of The Sent Be Show. Shots. All right, let's do this. Okay. Hello, everybody. Let me start that up again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is The Sent Be Show, and I'm your host, Lorian Gamroff, and my co-host is Satoshi's captain in the Satoshi Army, KG and Chingila. KG, welcome to the show. Welcome, G. How are you doing, man? I'm great. You know, when you have the show once a week, before we had the show, time seemed to go kind of slowly. But no, I, I swear, we do a show, we, we go to bed, we wake up and it's the show again. Straight up. That's how it is now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's always exciting for me to be here because I feel like it's a duty we have to actually educate our peers out there about the real technology that the BSV actually brings, you know? That's right. Yeah. Not many people know that there are many different versions of Bitcoin. There's three main versions of Bitcoin today. There's BTC or Bitcoin Core. Yeah. There's Bitcoin Cash or yeah. BCH. And of course, Satoshi's Bitcoin, the yeah. one that follows the original white paper that uh, Satoshi developed, and that's Bitcoin Satoshi Vision or BSV. Yeah. And this is the show where we talk about Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin. Yeah. At least we we advocate for Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin and we talk about the rest, specifically how the rest are really just pretenders to Satoshi's Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned, you know, there's more than one. And we just like trying to clarify the fact that everything else is just, you know, leveraging on the name itself versus, you know, the actual technology. So yeah, man, you hear your real BSV plug, man. We're here to educate and unfold the true technology of what this BSV space has to bring for you, man. St. B is a Bitcoin SV wallet. Yeah. We believe in Satoshi's original idea of Bitcoin being digital cash. Yeah. Over the years, of course, that narrative has changed into this idea of Bitcoin go being gold. Yeah. Uh, Trump alluded to it being digital steel. Yeah. <laughs> likening it to the early steel industry in, in America. Yeah. And of course, BTC is nothing like steel or gold. BTC is just this digital asset that you can't do anything with and it costs too much to transact with. Yeah. And so the only thing you can do is hodl it. It's <laughs> hold on for dear life, put it on your leg your wallet or your paper wallet and just leave it there yeah because there's nothing to it anyway so like we always say the best way to use it is not to use it <laughs> that's if you're into btc but we are not into btc we're not into digital gold not at all we think that's just a pipe dream yeah a, a sort of a dream about getting yeah. rich quickly without doing much work all you got to do is you got to buy a token and then you'll be able to retire yeah but Bitcoin, the way Satoshi envisioned it, was not, that was not meant to be a digital gold. It was meant to be digital cash. And the power of Bitcoin was that it could reduce the costs of transactions for the common person in the street, yeah. the, the, the person who is trying to make a digital cash transaction for some small value item, maybe a newspaper or a pack of gum or a loaf of bread or something like that. With 
CMP, all of that is possible. Right. So yeah. if you want to see what uh, Satoshi was envisioning when he was thinking about Bitcoin as digital cash, check out the CentB wallet. Yeah. CentB wallet is a mobile money app. Yeah. So if you're familiar with mobile money wallets like M-Pesa in Africa or Airtel, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of other mobile money apps around the world. Yeah. Well, CentB wallet is a mobile money app that leverages Bitcoin SV as mm -hmm. digital cash. Mm -hmm. And that means it's literally hundreds of times cheaper to transact with than M-Pesa. Uh, we've bundled a whole lot of shopping options in there. In fact, we're going to be bundling a whole lot more. So if you want a digital cash wallet that can help you buy things like Uber or top up your phone with data or shop online without using a credit card or a debit card, Sentby is the app for you. So we encourage you to check it out. Check out our website. It's a cool website KG's been working on. And you'll be able to then see all the different things that you can use Sentby wallet for. But yeah. we aren't just building out a, a business. We're not just building out a Bitcoin wallet. A lot of people, when they hear about CentB wallet, they say Bitcoin can't be used as digital cash. Yeah, It's not meant to be used as cash, yeah. right? I mean, at $5 a fee, how is that ever going to be cash? Yeah. Uh, well, that's because it's not BTC. It's not, Mr. Yeah. G. And, you know, it would have been easy for us just to put a product out there and just maybe let it you know grow organically with time but we picked up an issue with the misunderstanding around the technology and which somehow you know affects the entire space so we found it important for us to step out and actually educate people more about what is the true nature of bitcoin how it was supposed to be so yeah guys check out cnb app on the stores remember to plug your friends comment subscribe show some love yeah mobile money on fire Awesome. Thanks, Cage. Now, today we're going to be carrying on the series, I guess, that we've been running, which is uh, tackling the talks at the recent Nashville Bitcoin 2024 conference in the yes. United States. Yeah. The reason why we're tackling this conference is really because so many prominent people from big corporations, from government, and of course, the usual suspects in crypto, the crypto <laughs> land, they all attended this conference. It was massive. There yeah. were apparently 35,000 people yeah. attending this conference. That's a huge crowd. Huge crowd. Yeah. And there was a lot said at this conference. But what we want to do is we want to tackle some of the more prominent people. We've yeah. tackled Donald Trump. So go check out the episode that we did on Donald Trump's statements yeah. around Bitcoin and how he wants to turn the United States into a Bitcoin superpower. Mm -hmm. And of course, RFK, he wanted to buy 550 Bitcoins a day, a day. up to 4 million. Yeah. Talking about a Bitcoin reserve. And uh, we've also tackled RFK yeah. in another episode. So check out the two episodes that we've already done. The one is on RFK Jr., his campaign speech, Campaigner Mentals. And today we're tackling another very prominent person who mm -hmm. has been around in Bitcoin for very, very long. Yeah. Uh, a very prominent journalist. His name is Max Kaiser. Yeah. And if you've been in crypto for any amount of time, I'm pretty sure you've come across old Max Kaiser. Yeah. Very outspoken, mm -hmm. pretty aggressive. Super aggressive. Calling out everybody. Well, I mean, rightfully so, calling out central bankers and bankers and government. He's really cottoned on to this idea of Bitcoin being freedom. And he was on a panel mm -hmm. at the conference. And I just thought because it's Max Kaiser yeah. and we owe it to Max Kaiser yeah. <laughs> that we would take his comments. He didn't give a full keynote. Yeah. He just gave uh, some comments in a, in a panel with his wife and partner, mm -hmm. Stacey, Stacey Herbert. And uh, they've, they've been partners for a long time on mm -hmm. the Kaiser Report. And I've been on the Kaiser Report a couple of years back speaking to Max Kaiser about Bitcoin as cash. Those are the Kaiser cash report. days. Oh, yeah. Oh, Max. That's, hey, that's we wanted to uh, touch base with you. Yeah. Yeah, because way back South when Max Africa Kaiser was becoming still looking at, and the world was still looking at, a very big player in cryptocurrencies, in Bitcoin. The world There's a lot happening. Cost. Tell us about what's and going on with your company. In those days, I was I'm working on an electricity on, um, project uh, yeah. where building people could buy electricity. We'll put a link in the description to the um, interview. A, uh, it growing. also shows you've been in this space, Mr. G. You know, us doing this, it was only inevitable because you've also acquired so much knowledge through the time and it's only important for you to share and break the bread basically i'm not a noob in this space no no i mean i've been around <laughs> since almost the very beginning straight up what happened with me was because i got involved with bitcoin so early when there weren't other bitcoins yeah uh, there wasn't even litecoin there wasn't even name coin when bitcoin came onto the scene what was so great about it was that it allowed people to make digital cash transactions yeah. at low cost yeah and we were working at an energy startup yeah and what we found was that the africans 
who wanted to buy electricity couldn't because they didn't have bank cards, yeah. they didn't have mobile apps that could help them purchase electricity. Yeah. And that's when we thought, well, Bitcoin is the perfect solution. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need a bank account uh, or a credit card or a debit card or a bank card to be able to make uh, purchases with Bitcoin. And so I became so passionate about the digital cash aspect of Bitcoin. Yeah. And what's it now, 13, 14 years later, mm -hmm. It's all just completely gone off the track. It's lost the plot. Big time. Crypto has got nothing to do with Bitcoin payments, but I've stayed stuck in that idea. That's Satoshi's vision yes. for what Bitcoin should be. And so here we are now trying to break it down and explain it to people yeah. uh, what Satoshi's vision was, because that is long lost. Now, that being all said, you know, yep. we're going to dive into this next segment. We're going to look at a few quotes from Max Kaiser. Oh, Max. He's just as a bit of background, he's recently moved to El Salvador. And we did a show about El Salvador and President Bukele. He was the first coolest dictator in the world, in his so own he, words, yeah. <laughs> who ad adopted Bitcoin as a legal tender yeah. in El Salvador. Yeah. And we spoke about this. And uh, he's also got Bitcoin on reserve at the, at the government reserve. And so he's very much into Bitcoin. Yeah. And of course, for guys like Max Kaiser, it means that uh, this is one enlightened president and, and one enlightened country. Yeah. So much so that he's even now moved to El Salvador Quite with Stacy. Yeah. And uh, so he brings it up in this in this talk. In fact, when he comes onto the stage, there's somebody in the audience with a Bukele 2024 sign. So of course, Max can't help himself. This yeah. is his style. He gets up and starts you know, ranting about Bukele. Because, yeah, I saw him when he walked on there with the flag just flashing it and just chanting Bukele. Yeah. yeah. So it was, at first, I didn't understand why. But as you actually get to, you know, engage with the content, you start to unfold and understand why certain actions happen or certain things are said exactly mm. okay so we've got a couple little quotes that we're going to have a look at yeah and i'm sure we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one president bikali is the most popular leader in the world right now bitcoin is legal in el salvador and it is the new shining city on a hill el salvador is the first country out of yeah. the turning you know right el salvador is a beacon of freedom uh, El Salvador is uh, put, already put Bitcoin on their reserve. All these uh, politicians are up here saying we're going to put it on our reserve. Well, guess what, folks? They're lying because they're held in the pockets of the central bankers and Jamie Dimon and uh, all these uh, folks are, are not going to let them do that. Uh, so if you really want freedom, you want to smell the volcano of freedom, move to El Salvador, do, you know, uh, what... Ayn Rand suggested, if you're not treated well in your country, leave, get the f out. Go to a real country like El Salvador with a real leader, with real people and real entrepreneurialism, f the U.S. You know, they're not giving you what you want. You don't get freedom of speech. You don't get freedom of expression. You don't get freedom of or any kind of freedom. You know, move with your feet. The voting not going to get you nothing. Walk out. Walk. So, yeah, Ms. G, I mean, basically what he's saying is that Bitcoin is all about freedom. Yes. And, and we mentioned this before, this idea that yeah. if governments were to back their currencies with Bitcoin in the same way they used to back their currencies with gold, with gold yeah. it means they can't inflate those currencies. Yeah. And a, a lot of what happens in the world today with governments is that they don't need to raise taxes to pay for programs. They don't need to borrow money to yeah. build an army. What they can do is they can inflate currencies to be able to pay for the government programs yeah. that they want to enact. In terms of the, what Max is talking about, the mm -hmm. freedom, yeah. it means that as a people, if we are slave to politicians who can just do what they want, then are we truly free? This also speaks to you know the idea that Bitcoin actually cannot be seized by the government. Right, that's yeah. the idea that people say, if you have your keys, yeah then no one can take your coins yeah. and you can store your keys on a USB drive or even on a paper wallet. You can write down 12 words and a passphrase and that means you can and you can memorize those. Mm -hmm. And then how is government ever going to be able to take your money? So the idea of Bitcoin being unconfiscatable is deeply entrenched in the crypto mindset and something that is deeply misunderstood because yeah. there's nothing about Bitcoin that is unconfiscatable. We all know that this is a blatant lie mm. because if we're talking mining, we all know that, you know, according to how the white paper was written, 
minors keep each other honest so that means you are going to be like found out basically if you, there's any form of illicit activities or transactions there that's right if yeah. government wants to confiscate bitcoin they can do it yeah. and this is something that people in crypto don't know at all yeah they've been educated to believe that if you have your keys government can't get them they, they can't claw them out of your head if you've memorized them and that is a misunderstanding around how bitcoin works yeah the reason why satoshi created proof of work was so that miners would become large enough so that they would be accountable to law enforcement. Yeah. And if government wants to take your Bitcoins, they're not going to come to you. They're going to go to the miners and say, all right, we've got a court order. We've uh, recognized coins that are, are due to the, the proceeds of illicit crime or something, uh, illicit activity. And so what we want you to do, miner, mm -hmm. Mr. Miner, mm -hmm. is we want you to freeze those funds. And that kind of court order can be a global court order. And so if there's a court order that goes out, if there's law enforcement that says we've now identified money launderers, they're not going to go to the individuals. They're going to go to the miners. And this is the purpose of proof of work. Yeah. You said honesty. Honesty, yeah. Miners keep each other honest. Miners behave honestly. Yeah. Because if they don't behave honestly, if they do not comply with the law, they are going to get shut down and lose that investment. And Satoshi Nakamoto talked about it. He said miners are going to be more incentivized to behave honestly yeah. because they're going to make more money that way. Yeah. If they behave dishonestly, then they're going to lose that money. Yeah. Either because the miners in the network see that this miner is behaving uh, dishonestly, dishonestly and yeah. something's going on and they will reject its blocks. Uh, or, as I said, the sheriff can come knocking on the door of this large organization with these huge mining operations because proof of work requires that you have a big organization with lots of mining machines, lots of money, lots of staff, lots of investment. And it's very hard to be anonymous and hide away from the law yeah. if uh, you have such an operation. Yeah. So when it comes to freedom, this idea of unconfiscatable Bitcoin is a myth. It is. Governments can seize your Bitcoin. They can freeze your Bitcoin. Now, of course, they won't do it for small values, yeah. but if they want to, if they think that it's necessary, mm -hmm. they can come and seize your Bitcoin. Yeah. So this idea of freedom has really just become something that is this, uh, this banner that crypto people hold up, not understanding that it's built on this foundation of sand. Yeah. There is no such thing as unconfiscatable Bitcoin. Yeah. There's even a conference. Did you know there's a Bitcoin conference called Unconfiscatable? Are you serious? <laughs> so it just shows you how people have misunderstood Satoshi's invention. You know, Satoshi disappeared mm -hmm. and he left this technology, he left the white paper, he left some code and people started building it. And what happened was that this idea formed in those early adopters of what they want Bitcoin to be and how Stuck. they imagine it. Yeah. But really, when you understand it, you realize that this idealist thinking of what people want Bitcoin to be is completely wrong. And that's why we have multiple versions of Bitcoin today. Yeah. Because the people who got involved in crypto and, and Bitcoin because they wanted it to be something that was unconfiscatable yeah. or something like that they wanted to change bitcoin mm -hmm. because they saw that hang on this is this is no good if we have large blocks it means that there's going to be a small number of miners who are going to be able to afford to mine this network yeah. and it also means that individuals aren't going to be able to have the nodes are running on their laptops mm -hmm. because the data is going to be too huge yeah so the reason why bitcoin core exists btc is because they said we need to keep the block small. We also want to be able to change the protocol so that we can rebroadcast transactions. Yeah. And these pesky signatures filling up the block spaces, throw them out so that we can have more transactions squeezed into this tiny block because everybody has to admit that the fees are too high. Hence this idea of digital gold. Yeah. Don't move it. Don't spend it. Don't do anything with it. Buy it. Put it in a vault. Lock the key and come back 50 years later whenever you, you want to buy your Lamborghinis or your yachts. Although most people are not thinking about 50 years now. They're hoping that, you know, with, with RFK potentially coming in and buying their BTC, uh, that uh, they'll get rich uh, in the next year or two. It's definitely short term. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess also, like we are saying, it's for them, it's easy just to inflate it out of context because we all know if where there's freedom, 
you know, there has to be some form of responsibility that comes with it. And we've never heard the BTC side, like, touch on any form of responsibility. Like, the only, I guess, the only responsibility they have is influencing people into believing that BTC is the actual protocol when it's not. Yes, and yeah. it's all about belief. Yeah. So if you believe hard enough, <laughs> your you belief can, system, <laughs> then maybe it'll come true. Yeah. Everyone is talking about stockpiling and mm. Trump spoke about stockpiling. And now I'm sure like El Salvador is leading in terms of having BTC in their reserves. Yes. And Max mentions it, that they've got a reserve there. And in fact, President yeah. Bukele has been buying BTCs for a couple of years now, I think since 2021. Yeah. And uh, they've got about two and a half thousand BTC, give or take. I'm not sure what the current number is. And so what RFK was talking about is that he wanted to have Bitcoin in their reserve. Yeah. Well, El Salvador has beaten them to the punch. Yeah. Stacey Herbert says on the panel that uh, she was surprised that America seems to be the second country now that's going to be following Bukele's lead and creating a Bitcoin reserve. And I, was, I actually mentioned that El Salvador is actually in the lead, you know? Like, yes. Trump stood there saying we're going to be as but not realizing that El Salvador is actually quite years ahead if you look at it. Yes, they're literally years ahead. Yeah. But of course, it's all about competition. And Trump always wants to be you know, the greatest <laughs> in the world about everything. So if they've got two and a half thousand BTC, well, RFK already wants to up that to four million. So that's going to be interesting. But uh, yes, Bukele's already got this reserve and being the world's coolest dictator in his own words, <laughs> he implemented BTC, uh, the, the law that it becomes legal tender in the country. Yeah. And so El Salvador has already had BTC as legal tender. Yeah. They obviously are not using Bitcoin as transactions because of the fees. And mm -hmm. so they're trying to uh, ensure that Lightning Network becomes the payment system there. So they're busy trialing Lightning Network. We have also had a show about Lightning Network, yeah. but uh, the idea around there is that it's nowhere near being a reliable uh, network at this stage. Yeah, no the, way. Uh, the hope is that it becomes a network that can reduce the transaction fees on BTC. Yeah. But, you know, there's so many different problems there. So bukele has got the reserve and Max is highlighting this and hoping that America follows suit i mean it was g max called out like all these politicians and said they're lying which is quite true well it was campaign and mental yeah trump was a bit vague he just said bitcoin superpower although they have now uh, got a bill mm -hmm. uh the cynthia loomis cynthia Luma, yeah. uh, created the bitcoin reserve bill in mm -hmm. america and so that bill does state that america is going to start accumulating btc of course, RFK put a number on it. You know, he talked about 550 Bitcoin a day. too specific. Very specific <laughs> and uh, 4 million. These politicians certainly are promising things. Yeah. But Max says, well, they're all lying. They're just farming votes, which is our opinion in a way. Yeah. The reason why he says they're lying is because their central bank, if now uh, Bitcoin becomes a reserve and if the currencies, if the dollar starts being backed by either gold or Bitcoin, then what need for a reserve, a federal reserve or a central bank? Yeah. Uh, remember, the central bank is supposed to manage the supply of currency. Of currency yeah. And of course, all they're doing really is inflating it. And so are they going to be so willing to <laughs> hand over power There's to no these way. sound money guys? There's no way. It seems unlikely. There's a lot of power there. Uh, I don't know how much power presidents have, but I don't think they have the power to be able to fundamentally upturn that system. They don't, Mr. G. So Max thinks these politicians are lying. They don't seem to have the guts uh, that Bukele has, at least according to Max. Max has been calling out central bankers uh, yeah. to his credit. And Jamie Dimon, of course, is his favorite uh, whipping boy, the <laughs> CEO of JP Morgan. <laughs> Jamie Dimon certainly doesn't believe in Bitcoin. He's yep. said many times Bitcoin is just you know a scam or whatever, mm -hmm. pretty much like Warren Buffett and the rest of them. Yeah. So Max is calling these guys out and these politicians and saying, you know, these guys are just campaign and mentaling. Yeah, they really are. And then, of course, he's you know talking about Ayn Rand, and she's uh, a, a famous uh, author. She wrote books like Atlas Shrugged. I've actually got uh, a copy of Atlas Shrugged right over here, oh, yeah. and uh, Fountainhead. And she wrote about how politicians and government always seem to put regulations in place that stifle innovation and make it difficult for entrepreneurs to yeah. build businesses, to create value. And so in Atlas Shrugged, she just shows how governments have just created a world where all innovation is suppressed and there's no entrepreneurs who want to build anything. And so society just stagnates. 
and she always comes up when it comes to this free market stuff yeah and uh, max is saying there that you know uh, you can't change the system so the best thing that you can do is just get out now yeah. remember he's moved to el salvador he was a new yorker yeah uh, but he thinks that the grass is greener there in el salvador and he's very excited about it and he's calling everybody in america if, if they don't like the system because it ain't going to change yeah. it's always going to be corrupt and bitcoin doesn't seem to be a, a real thing they're going to be implementing well yeah. get out and find a new country you know, the funny thing about looking for greener pastures is that they still need gardening tools, Mr. G. And BTC is not one, <laughs> you yeah. know. And I feel like if BSV was the actual protocol adopted in El Salvador, geez, I'm sure there will there would be like evident progress. You yeah. know, innovation, young entrepreneurs, you know. But BTC has literally took out like the freedom that they're claiming that it should be having. Yes, th that's right. If he was talking about BSV, Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin, well, there's a network that yeah. is uh, something that governments don't want to shut down because mm -hmm. it complies with rules and regulations, yeah. as well as being a, a utility yep. blockchain yep. that can reduce the cost of transactions and can enable all sorts of business models. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always sad whenever I see how uh, politicians and businessmen are jumping on this Bitcoin bandwagon but not for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. That's what's sad. Although in the back of my mind, I think, well, you know, it's softening the ground. Mm. I think you once said it in a show that people will be able to dive in because now government is friendly around Bitcoin, yeah. but then immediately see that it's a BTC is a useless thing. Yeah. You can't do anything with it. Yeah. And they will be looking around for another blockchain that can do the things that they have been promised it can do. Yeah. So it's good that Bitcoin is breaking out, not just into the kind of consumer mainstream, but also yeah. now the big corporate and big government may mainstream government politicians, at least on the campaign trail, yeah. are speaking positively about it and therefore, you know, creating some kind of environment for people to start diving in and seeing what can we do with this technology, which is the best one. Yeah. And in my mind, it doesn't take you very long if you really have an open mind and you really want to investigate and, and you're not looking at uh, land Lamborghinis and don't have laser beams in your eyes. <laughs> when you start looking around at which blockchains can do the job, well, guess what? There's literally only one in town. Yep. Bitcoin SV is scaling to millions of transactions per second, not seven like on BTC. Funny enough, I was dialing in the other day into one of uh, the spaces on, on X and it actually threw me off, Mr. G, because it made me confident in terms of what we do and made me realize that a lot of people are actually misinformed. Like, and I'm talking about like techies, not just mere people, but people who are actually trying to be building cooler stuff, you know, but not realizing they're doing it on the wrong space. Well, those guys are the ones who are going to discover it first because yeah. they are not looking for riches. What they're looking for is a, a, a technology that can deliver a solution that, yeah. they, that they want to build. Yeah. And so they don't have a bias. There's a lot of people who are married to this idea of Bitcoin, so much so that they can't see reason. We talk about this cult behavior, mm -hmm. this belief that they have, yep. and they just want to believe it so hard so that it becomes true. But when it comes to innovators and entrepreneurs who just want to build solutions for people, yeah. who just want to make products that make cost of transactions go down, or maybe a, a solution that can help monitor something through a supply chain, yeah. they don't have any ideologies. They want something that works. That works. And when you go and that's look also around, cheaper. that's cheaper yeah. and it works. Yeah. And also it doesn't uh, skirt around rules and regulations because exactly. that's the first way that you're going to get nailed. Yeah. Eventually everyone comes to Bitcoin SV yeah. because Bitcoin SV is the one that is delivering this new uh, version of the node software that's being developed by the Bitcoin Association, mm -hmm. uh, Terra Node. Mm -hmm. This is something that is actually demonstrating yeah. real world results. There's progress, there's innovation, there's building, there's engagement. You know, it's not just conferences of people gathering and pushing a narrative. A lot has been happening on the BSV side. People have been actually building and yeah, it's, there's a lot of evidence in that. Cool, Mr. G. Yeah, I think uh, we can step into our next one. And the Salvadorans made Bitcoin legal tender. Salvadorans are the beacon of free speech. The Statue of Liberty is now a volcano in El Salvador. So, you know, get in line, pal. And let me tell you something. You don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you, Donald. So, you know, you've got to come to the Bitcoin side. You know, you've got to get in line. Um, 
You've got to bend the knee, which you probably are not going to be able to do. It's a rough world, okay? Bitcoin fixes this. It demonetizes violence. Is it safe? Okay. <laughs> All right. I think it's safe. <laughs> Good old Max. <laughs> All right, so uh, it uh, demonetizes violence, Cage. But he was a bit violent saying that. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Max for you. He's got a a bit of a, a tongue on on him, tongue lashing. Yeah. If you're I, not into Bitcoin, uh, he's going to give you a tongue lashing. Yeah, no, straight up, eh? Okay, so uh, uh, Bitcoin doesn't change; it changes you. There's been a long-standing belief or fundamental principle around Bitcoin is that you don't change it. Yeah. The idea is that it's this, not just the, the ledger being immutable, in other words, unchangeable, but the actual system of Bitcoin being unchangeable. Yeah. So he says, you don't change Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin changes you. Yeah. In other words, you can't change it into something that suits you. Yeah, yeah. If you're a, a regulator, sorry, <laughs> you can't force it to behave the way you want it to behave. Like the rules must bend to fit how it works. <laughs> yes, and so this is now one of those false statements around BTC yeah. that are, are just so egregious that we just have to touch on this and really speaks to this idea of multiple blockchains, multiple yeah. Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. He says that Bitcoin doesn't change, but one of the things that we have seen is how Bitcoin BTC has changed big over time, the years. Big time. You know, this idea of a protocol, and we've spoken about this so many times, mm -hmm. is that if you want a system that is stable, yeah. that encourages innovation and uh, attracts investors, mm -hmm. you can't have something that changes. Yeah. You can't build on a foundation that shifts. Because mm -hmm. anything you build on top of that foundation, and that's the protocol, yep. and Bitcoin is the protocol, yep. now needs to change yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, you change the foundations of a house, you're gonna have to change the walls to fit that foundation. But you can never do that. That's more like demolishing the house. <laughs> yes. So what uh, Max is jumping on is this meme that just is so pervasive in BTC, which is just so darn false, mm -hmm. is that Bitcoin doesn't change. BTC doesn't change. Because remember, remember, when they talk about Bitcoin, they're talking about BTC. BTC yeah. When we talk about Bitcoin, yeah. we're always talking about Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin. The only one. <laughs> the Satoshi's vision for Bitcoin or Bitcoin SV. Yeah. So he says Bitcoin doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Well, just go back in history. Go and have a look at how many changes have happened on the BTC protocol. Yep. And not through consensus or democracy, as everybody always talks about. They say, no, it's democratic. There was the segregated witness change, yep. a fundamental ground shifting, ground smashing uh, change. I think for me, that was a declaration, like we are going against regulation. They're certainly going against the idea of an immutable, yeah. unchanging protocol. Yeah. So segregated witness, a major change that the BTC community made to Bitcoin, which yeah. was to remove the digital signatures out of the transactions. One of the things that they've decided, the BTC community, is that Bitcoin needs to be ungovernable yeah. and uncontrollable. And the only way that you can achieve that is by allowing everybody who wants to run a node. And for them, a node means just the blockchain database. It doesn't mean a miner. Of course, Satoshi meant nodes were miners. miners. Those are the only nodes that exist. Yeah. So they forced the blocks to be small because this false belief that everybody should run a node, even if it's not mining, because they believe that you could then verify your own transactions Meanwhile, you can't verify anything because the miners decide what is uh, true and what is not. You just get information after the fact. So that was a very important change made to this unchanging Bitcoin. And then another very important change was the replace by fee change. Yeah. So if you broadcast a transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, BTC blockchain, mm -hmm. and the miner doesn't want that transaction because they want transactions with high fees, you're going to have to rebroadcast that transaction with a higher fee. That's not how Bitcoin was meant to work. Clearly, Mr. G, because when I'm looking at it like that, it, it clearly shows that BTC's intentions was never to be like your peer-to-peer -peer digital cash because there's no way, you know, us as mere users, we're going to be having to confirm and stuff. Like, that's not practical in the real world. Yeah, they, yeah. they'd say you're, you're only a first-class Bitcoin citizen if you can verify your own transaction. <laughs> So the, these are the narratives that have crept in, Cage, and it's bananas, but here we are. 
it just shows that uh, the BTC community have no concept of this idea of protocol. Yeah. And that's because they don't want Bitcoin commercialized. They don't want businesses to start using it. But they also don't want it to be regulated. Yeah. They just said there, you can't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you. He's also talking to the regulators about that. So he's telling the regulators, sorry, regulators, you're just going to have to deal with it, cope harder. The fact is Bitcoin is here, you can't stop it, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. It's quite crazy because, I mean, they're posing themselves as, you know, a, a, like commercial, basically. Like this whole BTC idea has been posed as a commercial idea. But at the same time, it doesn't appeal to the commercial practical side of how things should be moving. You know? Yes, it only <laughs> appeals to those who like to trade and like to speculate. So Period. that's why they're quite happy for there to be ETFs. Yeah. They're very happy for CEOs to have part of their bank on Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, you know, their treasury on Bitcoin. I mean, that's pretty much micro strategy. That's their strategy <laughs> is just hold Bitcoin and doesn't matter about the business. They'll make their money on the, the price appreciation. Yeah. So, you know, they, they don't want commercialization, but they, of course, want speculation mm. and they want trading. And, and that's what they love because that means now there's volatility and yep. they can, you know, pump and dump and they can speculate and hopefully they can get RFK to buy their Bitcoin at a, <laughs> at a million bucks a pop. <laughs> that yeah. is a, I think that was a hard promise, Mr. G. Like, there's no way that can be feasible. Like, no way. Yeah, I mean, it's super stupid. <laughs> luckily, I mean, luckily or unluckily, it won't happen because I, RFK seems like a long shot, even though he's a, he's a great candidate. But anyway, we, yeah. we won't get all political here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, Max, you know, you're talking about Bitcoin doesn't change. Yes, BSV doesn't change. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we have Bitcoin SV is because it's the only Bitcoin protocol that hasn't changed. It's the only one that stays true to the original white paper. Yep. Bitcoin SV is the only peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash version of Bitcoin. Hence, I constantly say the only one. It's the only, only Bitcoin. So, look. BSV, mm -hmm. the idea of Bitcoin SV, and if you just go and look at the Bitcoin Association, you know, they even have a whole role for it. We've mentioned Connor Murray many times, yep. the steward of the protocol. Yeah. You know, the idea that if you want Bitcoin to be commercialized, you have to promise and have part of the philosophy around that blockchain yep. that it is a protocol, a protocol that is meant to be developed on top of, mm -hmm. not to be changed. Because just like the internet protocol, yep. it was an unchanging protocol. Yes, they added new things to it later, but the protocol stayed the same. Yeah. There were just new additions. Yeah. It's not that the protocol changed. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin SV is exactly the same. It is a fixed protocol. Yeah. And this is the only way yeah. you are going to encourage commercialization. Innovation. Entrepreneurs and all that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So Max, if you're talking about Bitcoin SV, you'd be right that Bitcoin doesn't change. But you're talking about BTC, and I'm sorry to say, that's just factually incorrect because we've got all these changes that have been publicized yeah. and popularized and you know it just shows you don't actually know what you're talking about so guys just remember to check out the app on the stores remember to plug your friends and family this is the real bsv plug man mobile money on fire and then he talks about bitcoin demonetizing violence in fact he talks a lot about demonetization and what bitcoin can demonetize but in this case he's talking about demonetizing violence, violence yeah. that just speaks to the idea of the politician who has the ability to inflate currencies mm -hmm. and be able to hire armies and yeah. terrorize citizens and yeah. be oppressive and tyrannical. Mm -hmm. So this is the idea of Bitcoin being a sound money system, something that governments can't inflate. And that means it, uh, in his term, it, it demonetizes violence. It yeah. makes, makes uh, government violence impossible because the only way governments can be violent yeah. is by inflating currencies. Yeah. And, and that's his argument. But also what I'm picking up from that is that, you know, we had the early days like Silk Road and stuff like that. If we have an anonymous currency that is uncontrollable, unconfiscatable, yeah. uh, of course there are going to be bad actors that uh, get involved. And RFK made this crazy statement how he's going to say that Bitcoin transactions are non-reportable. Yeah. So... You know, it's it's very naive to think that Bitcoin is something that if it was anonymous and if it was decentralized and, and it was unconfiscatable and you couldn't report on it, yeah. that criminals wouldn't jump on that. It, it's just inevitable. It's contrary to actually what they're saying, because we all know if a system has no rules or regulations or any forms of check, 
that's a free for all system and there's going to be any form of activity that you know we can't even imagine because you know there's no rules the analogy that i like is bitcoin as gunpowder so um the if one country adopts gunpowder then you really have to adopt gunpowder as well to get into this um, paradigm of uh, mutual assured destruction or survival and now we're entering into the global hash war or the global Bitcoin war, which I wrote about five years ago, when everyone was saying that, oh, all these countries are going to ban Bitcoin. I said, no, in fact, it's the opposite. They're all going to embrace Bitcoin. They're going to competitively mine Bitcoin and hoard Bitcoin uh, because it becomes a new uh, back global Bitcoin standard. And we'll see every fiat money go to its long-term value of zero. Uh, it's demonetizing gold. You see that in the ETF market. People are dumping gold ETFs and buying Bitcoin ETFs. It's demonetizing the stock market. It's demonetizing the bond market. It's demonetizing the property market. It's demonetizing the fine art market. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. So any, anything you hold as an asset, it's the purchasing power relative Bitcoin is going to go down. And um, so this is the realization that's creeping into the minds of folks who have been observing Bitcoin for a while, the political class is really interesting to see so many politicians up here talking about Bitcoin. They have the talking points and they sound good. Uh, I don't think they've given it a deep thought yet because it disintermediates politicians. Because not only will the central banks be disintermediated by Bitcoin, but so will the nation state as we know it. So the nation state will dissolve as well as the central banks and we'll have a new, and we already see this in El Salvador, President Bukele is already looking to the future of a decentralized governance model that's no longer going along with the 300-year tradition of the central bank model that we're used to. He's decentralizing. People call President Bukele a dictator. No dictator would give his people the ability to own Bitcoin, an unconfiscatable give, asset that gives you self-sovereignty. That's the opposite of di dictator, right? So. You know, this is what I suggest people who are going to speak English look at, up a dictionary for the definitions before they open their mouths and say these words because they're use, incorrectly using them. And, but come to me and I'll help you. And if, in fact, you don't take a suggestion, then I'm happy to get more um, forceful. He's going to get more forceful. I hope uh, he demonetizes uh, his uh, forcefulness. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, Mr. G. But it seems like it's a common energy on the BTC space, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, the energy is if you don't believe us, yeah. you're a boomer, mm -hmm. you're a no-coiner, yeah. have fun staying poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how they push it, yeah. It's the, it's the, the trolls are strong. Uh, if you question anything they say. In fact, I'm getting my own trolling now that I'm starting to publish <laughs> articles and about all this stuff and uh, you, pleased to see trolls coming out of the woodwork. You need some education. I mean, Bitcoin education, Mr. G. Yes, I need, to, I need to learn about Bitcoin. You know what? It's easy being a martyr if you at least believe that you're right. And I'm happy when people want to comment and uh, call me out uh, mm -hmm. saying that I'm mistaken about BTC. You know, this is a, a conversation we all need to be having. Yeah. Uh, this is not about ideology. You know, it's at, at the end of the day, facts matter yeah. and utility matters. Mm -hmm. And if Bitcoin is going to be a digital gold standard or a Bitcoin standard, then I'm all in favor of such a thing because I do believe in Austrian economics. I think that money should be backed by gold. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that inflation is healthy for us. Yeah. And I also understand where inflation comes from. Yeah. It's not from greedy businessmen raising their prices and, and gouging. Yeah. It's uh, from uh, governments inflating currencies and devaluing their currency so that you need more of that currency to buy the same amount of goods. And yeah. that, of course, is what we call price increases. Yeah. So I'm very in favor of something like this. But unfortunately, I also understand that if you want to have backing of a currency, yeah. it has to be something that has intrinsic value. Yep. And we all know that BTC has a price. But still to this day, I haven't heard anybody talk about what value it has. And being decentralized, uh, being secure, yeah. that's not value. Mm -mm. You can't just say that this is valuable <laughs> because it's decentralized and secure. Yeah. I mean, it has to be a decentralized, secure something, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. not just a decentralized, secure blank, yeah. because that's a big blank. What value does this thing really have? 
we've been battling with that like for the longest time that's why even in the tech side of the of, of it there's no form of innovation like there's nothing mr g so uh, it's it's really just a ticker out yeah. there and hoping that the next fool will be buying it you know yes the only innovation happening on bitcoin is etf innovation yeah and <laughs> and uh corporate ceos like michael saylor buying it and putting on their balance sheet mm -hmm. i mean that's there's much innovation as there is so he the, he starts off by saying that bitcoin is gunpowder and when we discussed trump he talked about Bitcoin being like the early steel industry. So yeah. it's kind of thinking of it as digital steel. Mm -hmm. And if we think about steel, you know, steel is an infrastructure ingredient. Quite useful. Yes, you, you <laughs> need it to build railroads and yeah. you need it to build factories and skyscrapers and warehouses and, and all that sort of entire thing. Entire industries. Yes. Yeah. So when we think about Bitcoin being digital steel, well, you know, we have to think what kind of industries can it enable or, or how can it build infrastructure that makes things cheaper, better, faster. Yeah. And of course, BTC isn't infrastructure. Nobody's talking about BTC as infrastructure yeah. for building businesses. Yeah. They're talking about it as an asset on its own, just this digital asset. It's got nothing to do with building anything. <laughs> there is no build in BTC. You don't put those in one sentence. <laughs> yes. When you talk about Bitcoin, you're not talking about biddle, you know, build. You talk uh, BTC. You're talking about hodl. Hodl. If you if you're buying something and putting it into a drawer, uh, it's not building out anything. It's sitting there and gathering dust, digital dust. <laughs> so he says it's like gunpowder, and the idea that if uh, one country is going to be mining Bitcoin and hoarding Bitcoin, mm -hmm. then other countries are going to be forced to do the same thing. Because if one country develops gunpowder, now they've got an advantage over other countries. Yeah. They can invade and they can cause mayhem. Mm -hmm. So it's going to force other countries to also invest in BTC and have a reserve of BTC yeah. and have miners. Like Trump says, you know, we're going to mine Bitcoin and we're going to keep every Bitcoin that we mine and we're going to hoard it as yeah. a reserve. So Max Kaiser is saying, well, this is what's going to happen. It's inevitable. And he has been saying this for a long time, many, many years, yeah. that as soon as the floodgates open, as soon as that first penguin jumps off the, the iceberg, <laughs> yeah. it means other countries are going to look Follow, yeah. and they're going to say, right, they get it. look at this country, look at El Salvador, look how they're benefiting from hoarding BTC. We can't be uncompetitive anymore. We, yeah. we're, we're falling behind. We're at a disadvantage. So we had better dive into this BTC world as quickly as possible so that we can maintain a competitive advantage. And he talks about a decentralized governance model. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, a popular thing in crypto is this idea of smart contracts being able to enter into contracts that are not governed by the legal system, the court system or the justice system, but rather uh, legal and binding contracts that you can enter into with somebody else where the, the rules of the contract are defined in that code and nothing can change it, nothing can affect what goes on in that. Okay. So if you and I enter into an agreement and we use a smart contract, yeah. if I deliver on the terms of that agreement, the code will be able to determine whether or not I should get paid or you get paid or something like that. Yeah. So he kind of seems to be evoking the sense of instead of having politicians and administrators, what we can do is we can create these decentralized organizations, autonomous organizations, yeah. and we can build governance into these smart contracts. And then what can happen is we don't need politicians anymore. We can just live freely and every time we want to do anything we can just have a smart contract that can govern it the misconception around smart contracts yeah. i guess we, we should definitely go into it at we some should, point we should. the idea that the code is the actual legal requirements or the legal obligations or terms that can be complied with and we don't need law the code becomes law uh, of course there's so many problems with that you know, one of the biggest problems is, well, you know, the developer might intend something. You've talked about good intentions, but there's a bug and then it does something ridiculous and wrong and hurts people. So you can't have law defined in a software. You app. can't. That's actually quite ridiculous and immature to even mention this because how are we going to have like a full on system just controlled by code? 
Yeah, yeah, that's like, right. A, so a, let alone a country. <laughs> yes, a country, a full, full country. So this is a, a another very uh, you know big misunderstanding around smart contracts and what they're capable of. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, it's it's another part of the Kool Aid. Flavor. I don't know, Ms. G. It's like uh, these guys have like maybe just a brief discussion, and they just you know nitpick, you know all the fluff, you know just to sound good to, you know the crowd. I personally think. They are playing a game. I refuse to think that these people are... I think that... you're giving them too much credit, Cage. You reckon, Mr. G? Yeah, it's a belief system. Yeah. And it's very hard to shake a belief mm -hmm. that you true. really hold That's true. dear and that you want to be, want to be true. Really, this is this is the BTC and the crypto crowd. They, yeah. they have a belief. Um, they have a belief that is unshakable. And the only thing that is going to shake that belief is when the writing's on the wall and the whole cast of cards is imploding yeah and it becomes undeniable but until that day i mean this thing can continue and continue Jeez. so for who knows how long you never know it's quite sad because you know we we all know that uh, president bukele i'm sure has like good intentions towards his citizens but this it's quite scary because the long run of it seems like a lot of people are going to get hurt it wasn't a very popular thing that he did mm -hmm. he talks about himself being a dictator mm -hmm. uh, it's on his twitter profile the yeah. world's coolest dictator and of course he was v very dictatorial when he decided to start investing taxpayer money into btc it was and enforcing btc onto the people as legal tender yeah so it's not that he is just allowing Bitcoin to flourish, mm -hmm. or, or at least what people think of as Bitcoin, is not allowing people to make a choice. Yeah. He's saying, this is how it's going to be. BTC is now the new thing. Yeah. And there was a, a whole a massive protest Big because time. of yeah. that. Yeah. So it's not that there is popular support for mm -hmm. BTC as a money system in, in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the wild fluctuations, I yeah. mean, recently Bitcoin, BTC, you know, had a, a very wild swings up and down. And also because of the campaign mantles, they influenced politicians. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about now uh, these promises that Trump and RFK have made about buying Bitcoin. Mm. This is going to stimulate demand. Def. And if they don't get elected, then what's going to happen to Bukele's Bitcoin BTC stash? Is that going to be halved in value? It could easily crash. Mr. G, that's why I'm saying it. I find it very scary because with BTC, it's also quite inevitable where it's heading. Yes, it, well, it, it's inevitable to us because yeah. we rightfully recognize that yeah. BTC is just an idea. It's an abstract concept. It has no basis in reality. It's got no utility. You know, we keep saying it. It's got no usefulness about it. So as soon as the fashion is over, it's over. Yeah. It's it's a digital collectible. Yeah. Max Kaiser believes that it's inevitable that now BTC is being held in reserve by one country, then other countries are going to follow. So he's, yeah. he, he's talking about a global Bitcoin standard. So, mm. I mean, that that is not practical because we know that the only way that can be possible is through bsv he also touches on the point that you know fiat money will <laughs> eventually go to its intrinsic value you know quoting voltaire there yeah that it will be eventually zero well that's the that's a historical statement yeah. and what we've seen when it comes to these fiat currencies and a fiat currency is really just a government money in the olden days uh, currencies like the dollar and the yen they all used to be backed by gold so all that the currency was was a note which said that you could redeem gold a promissory note a yeah. promissory note you yeah. could take it to the bank and you could redeem that note for your gold yeah of course those days are over we don't have a world which has a gold standard any of the currencies and, and of course fiat currencies have existed in the past yeah. just paper currencies that have no backing by gold mm -hmm. and uh, he's referring to voltaire as you said yeah. who had that famous quote all fiat currencies revert to their intrinsic value of zero yeah. because remember just a little piece of paper that's uh, that's you, eventually you, what it is that's all it is just yeah. a piece of paper so he's saying though that it's going to be a bitcoin standard and ultimately you know uh, currencies the only way they'll survive is by being backed by bitcoin yeah speaking to the digital gold yeah. idea yeah but then he also goes on about how bitcoin demonetizes gold and demonetizes this and he's talking about how you know even gold is going to go to zero against yeah. bitcoin of course that's not very true right now because gold is at an all-time high two and a half thousand dollars 
uh, it recently uh, broke and so it doesn't seem like Bitcoin at this stage is demonetizing gold mm -hmm. and it's hard to believe that uh, I mean he says property imagine says, that uh, and, and all he's really saying is not that that will, it will lose value yeah. those things mm -hmm. but if you consider the price appreciation of BTC against those assets then in his mind clearly he thinks BTC is just going to keep increasing in value increasing in value until ultimately everything measured against BTC just goes to zero but Mr. G we spoke of intrinsic value here and which is non-existent in the BTC I mean property there's way much intrinsic value there let alone gold yeah it's a precious metal you know <laughs> yeah he might be right right now when it comes to the price mm -hmm. of BTC so I, we could almost say it would be more accurate uh, that in his view over the short term medium term yeah. I mean I doubt long term but yeah. that ultimately the price of BTC might increase and that's true yeah. we don't know how long this craziness is going to last you know people are like I said they're drunk on this BTC <laughs> Kool-Aid Peter Schiff's quote about never before in history or never before have so many people been, been so, so wrong, wrong about so much yeah. it, it's such a relevant quote in, in just about every sphere you look at yeah. but BTC and Bitcoin it, it's so relevant people are so wrong you look at a conference like this and you see uh, heads of massive corporations uh, uh, in big investors politicians technology people you look at this and there's thousands of people in the audience and they're all rooting for these guys and they believe everything they say and you think how could this they all be wrong mm -hmm. how can they be so mistaken yeah. but this is just the state of the world we're in yeah. where people are in love with an idea they look at Bitcoin as an idea they have this belief this cultish belief that Bitcoin is the savior of yeah. mankind because they want it to be yeah they so badly want to fix the system that we have the system of fake money of corrupt politicians and Bitcoin when it arrived on the scene had this whiff of freedom about it mm -hmm. this whiff of decentralization in yeah. a way that in their mind means that governments can't corrupt it and manipulate it mm -hmm. and so they are sold on this idea so passionately yeah. and nothing can budge them from that view and when people like us speak against it and yeah. we say guys guys the emperor is wearing no clothes <laughs> you know you, you you think that you've got the most beautiful clothes on and um, if only people were smart enough to see they don't even see it but they've convinced themselves that no these clothes must be beautiful and yeah. I must look amazing in them and if you don't see it you're just too stupid yeah but it's the fact is find that little innocent naive child who's not drunk on this uh, concept and he'll say sorry you're naked yeah there's no clothes yeah so I mean how can we fight that we can't Mr. G, it's hard you know we, we're gonna try and and put sense into the the YouTube waves and the airwaves out there yeah but I know what's going to happen and it happens all the time we're just gonna get trolled yeah we're gonna get told to study Bitcoin yeah because we don't know what we're talking about and it's quite funny Mr. G because it's always like connoted to that like you actually don't know what you're talking about at yeah. least we can explain what gives Bitcoin value yeah uh, and it, and we don't have to talk about price not at all he also speaks about uh, BTC like you know disintermediating uh, politicians sort yeah. of like chopping their powers off basically yes yeah disempowering them yeah and uh, again that speaks to the idea of a sound money system yeah. where politicians in a democracy typically can just promise the earth they can promise their, their constituents anything yeah. to get the votes but then they've got to pay for it yeah and of course in a world with honest money mm -hmm. if they can't raise the taxes to pay for those programs or they can't borrow that money they're gonna to have to to inflate it yeah and uh, if you can't inflate the currency it means that the politician can't go up there and promise the earth and gain power through popular support because you know if you promise things to people they will vote for you right yeah. if you promise them free stuff yeah. uh, but eventually you got to pay for that yeah. stuff and if you can't inflate the currency well you can't pay for it you can't promise it this is why I also believe in sound money yeah but unfortunately BDC ain't it it ain't it, Mr. G. And if we talk in sound money, you know, it also speaks of a system that's conducive for also like just anyone, you know, not just the 1% or the elite benefiting from that. Mm -hmm. Because 
with the current system, we can see that, you know, it's only people in power that are benefiting, you know. That's right. The yeah. people who are wealthy benefit yeah. from it. Inflation hurts the poor and the yes. middle class the yes. most. Yes. So it's a terrible system that we have. I would love to see a world where we can move away from these fiat currencies. Yeah. But BTC is not that tool. I'm pretty old school. And to me, it's always going to be gold that's proven itself over time? Well, I, I think that, you know, Bitcoin is a magic mirror. And if you are of good character, it makes you even a better character. If you're a bad character, it makes you a worse character. If you look at somebody like a Craig Wright, the Bitcoin magic mirror revealed that he's a true scumbag. Ooh. <laughs> right? If you're somebody like a Michael Saylor, the Bitcoin mirror exposed somebody with a high degree of integrity and a passion for education and a an deep understanding of Bitcoin. Same thing in the political class. You know, you have a Cynthia Lummis who I think you can say gets it. You know, she's been orange pilled and she's working hard in politics to make positive things happen. Other people in politics who talk about Bitcoin will find out soon enough whether or not they're just being narcissistic, self-serving assholes or whether they are genuinely hardcore Bitcoin or maximalists. You know, you know, nobody escapes the guillotine. You know, Bitcoin is the new guillotine of the 21st century. All the toffs who are posing and not really worthy of the power that they get you know, you're gone. Goodbye. Bye. Have a nice day. You're going to be disintermediated and you're going to zero. Yeah. You're a mirror on the wall. Yeah, he's the, he's <laughs> the fairest Bitcoin of them all. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of threw down the gauntlet on this one. I, I, Big time, right? Eh? He's, uh, he's saying that uh, Bitcoin is a mirror. Mm. What do you see when you look in that mirror cage? Honestly, I see a true Satoshi soldier, Mr. G. Yeah? Yeah, because um, we've been trying to fight this battle and actually, you know, slay the liars all these politicians and campaigners and pumpamentals all of that we've been trying to actually fight those yes so what do you see when you see when you look in the mirror well i'm asking the same question as the the wicked queen right <laughs> who's the fairest bitcoin of, of them, them all? all yeah it's very interesting what he says because he says that bitcoin is a mirror it can if you're a good person it uh, it reflect that if you're a bad person it will reflect that yeah and I'm going to say he's right. It's quite accurate, uh, yeah. Because right now, when you look at Bitcoin, if you are somebody who is just in it for the money and you don't care about... The, the real protocol, how it benefits everyone. Yes, if this is something that in your mind is something that will enrich you. Yeah. And you don't care about everybody else. You just want to make sure that you make the biggest bucks. Yeah. Then, of course, this is something that will highlight that. Yeah. Because everybody at this conference, they're looking at the BTC mirror. And what they are seeing is money. Yeah. And power. Yeah. That's all everybody wants to look at. That's that's like the natural energy in the BTC space. Like yes. everyone is pompous. Everyone is arrogant. Everyone is talking big, you know? Yeah. But sadly, not even tr understanding the real BSV or the real protocol. That's right. If you're looking at uh, Bitcoin as a utility ledger that can reduce the cost of transactions for millions of people around the world. Yeah. That's not what these guys are looking at. Mm -mm. They're looking at the money spinning mirror. That's all. Everybody is reflected at this conference in that BTC mirror, the get rich mentality. Yeah. Uh, and they love these politicians when they come in and they promise to pump their bags yeah. because all they're seeing is Lambos in their future. They're looking for a savior. <laughs> they're not looking at uh, something that can help the rest of the world. The only way they say that uh, this can help the rest of the world is if the rest of the world buys BTC. And of course, these guys with their early adopters, I mean, Max Kaiser being a very early adopter. Yeah. He wishes the world would buy BTC, but not because it's going to help them. Mm -mm. It's going to make him rich. That's, now, that's basically what they're pushing. <laughs> that's all they're pushing. And then he talks about Craig Wright. You know, he says, Craig Wright's a scumbag. Well, let's talk about Craig Wright here because uh, we know Craig Wright. <laughs> I think that was uh, quite a, a bad move, like for him to actually stick out like Craig like that. He, he talks about Craig Wright, he talks <coughs> about Michael Saylor. So who is Craig Wright? Let's just quickly uh, catch everybody up here. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, of course, the who is Satoshi Nakamoto question has been the biggest question in Bitcoin since the beginning of Bitcoin. Inception. The Bitcoin white paper was published under yeah. the name Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah. And for more than a decade, for 15 years, people have been wondering who is this guy? It was a fake name, uh, just a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. And there have been lots of you know, ideas. Maybe it's the guy from Blockstream, Adam Back. He was referenced in the Bitcoin white paper. Yeah. Maybe it's this guy, Nick Zabo. Maybe it's some like 
<laughs> Japanese guy. I remember somewhere. that. <laughs> yeah, Dorian Nakamoto. You know, everybody's been trying to figure this out. And a couple of years ago, an Australian academic, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, somebody who's uh, I've got so many accreditations, I don't even know is, what to call him. Is it- I think, uh, is it Professor Craig Wright? Not, but he's got multiple PhDs. Anyway, Craig Wright, this Australian academic, he was exposed as being Satoshi Nakamoto by Gizmodo and Mm -hmm. Wired Magazine and GQ, I think even had an article. Mm -hmm. And uh, the world though was shocked when he came uh, out and he said, well, he is Satoshi Nakamoto because he was the complete opposite of what everybody expect- expected. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone had this idea of who Satoshi Nakamoto was, that he was this hacker and guy who didn't want fame. He didn't want money because Satoshi's coins are yeah. still sitting in Satoshi's wallets. And he all he wanted to do was he just wanted to bring down the system. He, yeah. he hated central banks. He was this anarchist and he hated the man and he hated government and he hated all this stuff and he wanted to bring it down. You're expecting like a rock star dude type of vibe. <laughs> right, and so now this middle-aged, loud mouth academic comes out and says, you guys are all wrong. You guys don't know what you're talking about. You've stolen my invention. Uh, you've turned it into something that it wasn't. I wanted a system that was regulatory compliant, that could eliminate fraud, yeah. that could reduce the cost of transactions, and could enable a whole world of possibilities now that we finally have uh, a transactional system mm-hmm. that operates in a decentralized way yeah. uh, that can really just empower millions of people, billions of people across the globe. And uh, uh, what you guys have done with BTC is you've taken the name, you've turned it into something it's not, you've completely missed the point of Bitcoin. You truly have. It's not about investing, yeah. it's not about making money, it's not about digital gold. None of that. It's about what I said it is in the title of the white paper a peer-to-peer electronic cash. But of course, because he was so contrary to this myth that had been built up, Mm -hmm. the world couldn't handle this, couldn't stomach it. And of course, there's this whole idea that, well, if you own the coins, then it's easy to prove it, right? You can just go and spend a coin out of your stash, or you can sign with your your private keys, and Mm -hmm. you can prove that you're Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, Craig Wright, having degrees in law, knows that, and uh, as should everybody, that possession isn't ownership. Yes. And so Craig Wright, Dr. Craig Wright, has Mm -hmm. been now going through the court system. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's been suing for defamation, and uh, there was a major court case that came out recently uh, where a judge made a determination based on some evidence that was presented in court. Was it the Satoshi on trial? That's uh, right. We even had an episode about the Satoshi on trial. So go back and watch that. It's one of our earlier episodes. Might be a bit rough around the edges. Super early. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Max Kaiser says here is that when you hold up the Bitcoin mirror and you hold it up to Craig Wright, he is just a, what do you call him? A a scammer. He said a scumbag. Scumbag. Imagine that. (laughs) And then he says, Michael Saylor, contrary, is somebody with integrity, who believes in education and making the world a better place. I'm sorry, Max Kaiser, (laughs) you're looking in the BTC mirror. Of course you're going to see that (laughs) if you're looking at this sham of a crypto BTC and you're going to look at somebody like Dr. Craig Wright, whether or not he's Satoshi, I mean, we, we're pretty open about it, yeah. uh, you know, based on his education, based on the work that he does at Enchain and all his patents, he is the largest Bitcoin patent holder in the world. And let's leave it at that, Mr. G. That alone just states that this guy is legit. Let's not even label it in any way, or it, but let's look at what he has put out in terms of material yes, all to the, justify. He's been delivering master classes. Thank you. There are h- how many hours mm-hmm. of educational content that he's been putting out about Bitcoin, helping people understand Bitcoin. Exactly. And frankly, I mean, it's laughable to think that uh, Craig Wright, even if he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, he's a scumbag. Yeah. The only reason they think he's a scumbag is because he's coming after them. He's calling them out. And yeah. because of his wealth of Bitcoin knowledge, and, and I want to just say this, if you guys want to understand Bitcoin for real, then go and f- see what Craig Wright has put out there. Go and find his talks. There are a lot of them on the on YouTube, a lot. Uh, lot of lectures that he's given, a lot of masterclasses and stuff. Yeah. And there is nobody in the world who understands Bitcoin better than Craig, Dr. Craig Wright. I, I fully agree, Mr. G, because, you know, just to also, you know, nullify him to a scumbag, just also shows that, you know, once they actually fail to push their narrative, just them alone, 
they want a character assassinate like people on the other side of the right that's side. That's all they have. That's all they have. Assassination. Literally. Yeah, it's like there's no arguments. I, I mean, literally, he just nullified a doctor. You know, well knowledgeable someone in this space who created this entire technology to compared to Michael Saylor. What has Michael Saylor created? Michael Saylor is the biggest shill on earth. I don't I know what education he's been. He's just been telling you to borrow money to buy Bitcoin. That, some, that's why I'm like, Mr. G, okay, maybe you, you're quite right when you say I give them too much credit because I cringe most of the time I'm listening to Michael Saylor. Just start at the beginning, if you don't mind, explaining what is it. Sure. What do you do with the Bitcoin besides it just gather value? Real estate developers in New York City, they're not buying the real estate because they want to live in it. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. People, 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 people that use, that use, that use, that use fiat, 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 fiat currency, currency as a store of store, 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 value. value. We call them we core. core. We call them we core. And I'm like, there's probably far more intellectual people who are like following him and they find him like informative in what he's saying. And I'm like, why? How? How? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. If you are following Max Kaiser's advice and looking at Bitcoin as a mirror, if you look into the BTC mirror, you know, it's uh, cracked. This hopium. <laughs> this mirror is uh, cracked, Mr. G. Cracked <laughs> mirror. It's reflecting fake riches, fake Lamborghinis. It's all it's doing is shining lasers into your eyes and blinding you and, and, and making you think nonsense. You got it, Max. You yeah. know. But look at the Bitcoin mirror, the real Bitcoin, the Satoshi's vision of Bitcoin. Go and look at Satoshi's Bitcoin. And when you reflect Craig Wright in that mirror, you're going to start questioning you know, what the mainstream is telling you about this guy. Yeah. And I just want to say to the audience members who know, who know what we're saying, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you know, you know. If you know, you know, Mr. G. Yes. And a lot of people know. Yes. Even those in the BTC side also just pretending, actually. Right. They're more pretentious in terms of, okay, I can make a quick buck this side, just ripping people off. But in terms of what the truth is, they know. It's obvious. I mean, as we said, it happens to us. You know, yeah. when we put information out there, and when I write articles about Bitcoin and I explain to people why Bitcoin BTC is not Bitcoin and yeah. it's valueless, you know, I get trolled. Mm -hmm. People want to shut me down. They yeah. tell me to go and study Bitcoin or they yeah. want to um, disparage me on the comments. Mm -hmm. It's because people don't want this dream of theirs to evaporate. Yeah. And truth hurts in this space. Yeah, we, we are practically naysayers in their world. We are like those guys that, you know, if they had it their way, we, we would be torched. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally. There is no proof out there yeah. who's who. But uh, there's one thing we know for sure is that if uh, Max Kaiser had just swapped those names and talked about uh, Craig Wright, uh, I mean, he is the only one I can see with real integrity and yeah. a real passion for educating people around mm. Bitcoin yeah. and not trying to get you to buy BSV. Craig Wright has never, ever said, go and buy these coins, go and put Bitcoin on your balance sheet, go and borrow money, go and mortgage your house for Bitcoin. The only thing Craig Wright is doing is telling you to go and build and go and develop something, explore this technology and take it to where it, it can go. Yeah. Uh, Craig Wright is the only one who's telling us, you know, that the opportunity is for us is to develop solutions that can solve problems. You know, actually, since you put it that way, Mr. G, I just had an epiphany. You know, you find a parent who's realistic with their kid and tells them that, you know, you need to work hard in life for you to earn what you need. You know, you have to work hard. And then there's a parent that comes and just tells, you know, you can be a bird, you can be a cat and all of that. And I feel like the BTC space is like that type of parent, you know, mm. because they're just throwing the fluff around, but nobody's actually talking about the real practical hard work that goes into building true wealth. Exactly. Yeah. But this is why they're building this, uh, this dream of theirs on sand. Yeah. They, they know in their hearts that BTC is just an, an abstract idea. It's got nothing to do with any fundamentals. Mm. And anybody who's going to come in and try and take that away from them, that dream, you know, yeah. they've got the, a little bit of BTC and they're just hoping that that little thing grows and can free them from, you know, financial distress yeah. anybody who's going to come and tell them that they're mistaken and they're deluded 
They don't want to hear it. You're an enemy. And Craig yeah. Wright, he is the one who is the biggest risk to this whole fantasy falling <laughs> apart. He's like the boogeyman to them. <laughs> this huge boogeyman. But not if you understand Satoshi's vision, yeah. like us. If we want to achieve something and we want to build something great, if we want to do something, then we can just go and leverage this technology yep. and find its true value. Yeah. We're not sitting here investing in Bitcoin. We don't have any, this is not a chart show. No. You know, we're not telling you which cryptos <laughs> to invest in. No. You know in your heart, mm -mm. seriously, you know, that all you're doing is you're just gambling in a, in a big crypto casino. So Max Kaiser, your Bitcoin mirror analogy is a wonderful one. We think that if you are looking at Bitcoin BTC, yes, you're just going to see a world where you have this fantasy asset that can just grow in value and can make you rich and make you free. But if you're looking at Satoshi's Bitcoin, you're looking at it in a much deeper way. You can see that this is a technology that can enable new things. It can empower people around the world. It's such an incredible technology that's being held back by guys like Max Kaiser, who might have good intentions, yeah. but there's one thing for sure, is that he's selling you a dream. And uh, there is a mirror that he's now given us. He says, look at the Bitcoin mirror. If, if you're looking at the BTC mirror, you're going to be smoking hopium forever yeah, until it kills you. All this talk, word salad, motivations and all, it's all about because he has BTC stacked up, stashed up somewhere. Of course, uh, Max Kaiser has BTC. He's, he's been <laughs> hoarding it and hodling it for, for a decade. The last thing he's going to want to hear is that Craig Wright is, is telling him he's deluded. What must None mean? of these guys want to believe they're deluded. You probably have a heart attack from that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thanks, Max, for giving us this analogy, this magic mirror analogy, because we think it works. And as for Dr. Craig Wright, yeah. respect. Respect. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ms. G. I mean, uh, yeah, we've covered enough from Max Kaiser. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be stepping into our uh, user questions and feedback for this week, yo. Uh, so, yeah, our first one comes from uh, Sangster. Um, and they're saying, are these politicians going to face the SEC for market manipulation? Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, one thing we can be sure of is that it is market manipulation. Is. Uh, if you're going out on a campaign trail and you're promising to buy enormous amounts of BTC, I mean, it's naive to think that people are not going to trade on that. There, there's a rumor out there now. Yeah. And that's what people trade on, trading yeah. on rumors. And when it becomes fact, either, you know, RFK wins or loses, people are going to trade on that too. Now, mm -hmm. whether the SEC is going to go after RFK or Donald Trump, it's another question, yeah. but uh, it, it certainly doesn't feel very honest. It doesn't. It doesn't for real because, you know, keyword is manipulation. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, our second one comes from uh, Rack Now, uh, and they are saying, well, this is quite a lengthy one, but they are saying after watching both your Trump and RFK shoes or oh, shows. Yeah, sorry, man. After watching <laughs> both your Trump and RFK shows, as well as the interviews in full, neither mentioned the BTC once could be plausible deniability is in play here politics tricks and they know about bsv they maybe even uh, know the future to a degree great script for a movie when i heard them i heard promises for bsv and the future so he says that they don't mention btc at this conference of course not yeah because in the mind of all the delegates and the i mean the mind of the mainstream there is only one bitcoin btc now, some of these people might have heard about the forks. I'm sure actually many people have heard about the forks of Bitcoin. And uh, they just look at BSV as uh, another alternative mm -hmm. of Bitcoin. I mean, remember, for them, it's all about the ticker symbol. Yeah. You know, whatever is BTC is Bitcoin. Yeah. And so the politicians clearly don't have much knowledge about the differences. Uh, you know, a lot of what RFK said, he, it sounded a lot like, and even Trump, Whenever they talk about Bitcoin, they refer to it as this infrastructure, this network, this revolutionary thing. They're not referring to BTC, but they're referring to the original Bitcoin, Satoshi's vision Bitcoin. So this is the thing about Bitcoin is that it still has a lot of the promise of the original idea of Bitcoin wrapped up in it. You know, this idea of being able to make digital transactions that are low cost and be a ledger. Yeah. But unfortunately because of the shift into the digital gold narrative those ideas don't apply to btc anymore but the btc crowd don't want to drop them entirely 
uh, if they were being completely honest, they would stop publishing and posting and referring to the Bitcoin white paper because no longer is Bitcoin BTC a digital cash system. Yeah. So this is just the, the nature of, of this kind of information asymmetry. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people out there who are and influential people who are listening to what they think of as the most relevant and important people in Bitcoin. They are the ones with all the followers, the ones that are investing at companies like ARK Invest or BlackRock. So these politicians are not doing a deep dive into the differences. They are just hearing babble going on. That's why at that conference, they don't ever say BTC. They just say Bitcoin. And of course, they don't really want to say BTC anyway, because if they say BTC, it's too it, distinct. It means yeah. now, oh, you mean there's another Bitcoin? Yeah. There's a Bitcoin SV? Which brings attention to the other side. What's the difference? Yeah. What's going on there? And they're going to say, no, that's not Bitcoin. Mm. You know, they, mm. they don't want BSV to have the word Bitcoin in it. Oh, yeah. And in fact, this goes back to these court cases with Craig. Yeah. The guys who were uh, um, going against Dr. Wright were what are called COPA. Mm -hmm. And it was an organization consisting of Coinbase and um, a lot of exchanges and people who are very vested in BT. And for them, Craig Wright is a risk to that yeah. uh, because Craig Wright is coming out and saying, no, you guys are st have stolen the Bitcoin name. BTC is no longer what I envisioned. It's not what I wrote about in the white paper. And I want to get the name back. And of course, this creates a very unstable place for the market because if Craig Wright becomes more prominent and pe more people start hearing his, what he's saying and saying, I'm the inventor and this is not what I wanted. You guys have stolen my invention. People are going to trade on that. Yeah. And all these people like Max Kaiser, even President Bukele, so many powerful people who have so much Bitcoin, they don't want somebody like Craig Wright coming up and saying, hey, you guys, you guys are all liars. Uh, you've stolen the Bitcoin name. I want it back. I'm right. the inventor. Because what's it going to do to the price of BTC? So it's a huge risk. These guys don't want this information out. Yeah. They want to shut Dr. Wright down. They have gone to court and they've got the court to say that Craig's not allowed to say he's Satoshi. He's not allowed to claim copyright on the white paper because it puts their bags at risk. At risk. Yes. Yeah, and Mr. G, that was, that's actually like a, a proper summary of it all because that's what really this war is about. It's been about that, that these guys are just protecting their bags. They don't care about the technology at all. Like if that was the case, we would have seen like some innovation, but we haven't seen it. So yeah, it's all about the bags. Uh, it's always about the bags. Yeah. Thanks for that, uh, Rick. Now, um, our last one comes from JTK Ventures and they're saying someone from the BSV Association or leadership needs to meet with Trump and RFK to detail BSV's position and its features compared to other options. Yes, yes, it would be lovely for our politicians around the world to be educated about yeah. things. Uh, that's not how politicians go into power, though. Yeah, uh, it's not about understanding things. It's about promising things, right? <laughs> so yes, it would be lovely. And of course, the Bitcoin Association does that. Yeah. You know, they have ambassadors around the world. They have a lot of people who are going to these kinds of forums. And uh, we've mentioned Brian Doherty before. He, he speaks uh, at the Capitol and he yeah. speaks to senators and things about Bitcoin. But the momentum in the crypto space and BTC and all this investment is just so strong right now that it's it's going to take quite a lot for the world to make sense of what's going on here. Yeah. And in my mind, it's never going to be a case. And I don't think it ever is where the politicians turn around and say, oh, actually, have you noticed this little crypto over here, BSV? Wow, it's uh, scaling. I do think that's going to happen, though, yeah. eventually. Yeah. Uh, but right now, as long as this crypto mania is, is pumping, it's taking away all the attention yeah. from BSV. But it's undeniable what BSV is being able to achieve yeah. uh, with its uh, <laughs> transaction volumes and its costs. Yeah. And it's just a matter of time before an enterprise looks and says, this is a good blockchain, starts implementing it, maybe a CBDC, and then people are going to realize, wow, you know, this, this Bitcoin thing, this is real. Uh, and maybe this digital gold thing ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up, Ms. G. And... For me, that's an exciting future because that's that's where we're going. You know, we can't deny that. Thanks for that, JTK. Um, yeah, Mr. I think we've actually come to the end of our show. Okay, great. Sure. It's always a little bit exhausting and a little bit scary when you have to deal with Max Kaiser. 
<laughs> you know, he's definitely a character. Super animated. <laughs> yes. And uh, I just want to mention also that um, if you want to read more about these kinds of topics that we cover here, I do have a blog, uh, gamroff.substack.com, where I just sort of flesh out the topics that we're talking about here. Uh, in fact, I've just, uh, uh, if you go and look at my Substack, you'll see I've published an article about this Max Kaiser conference, really discussing uh, uh, this, this idea of an unconfiscatable, ungovernable Bitcoin, uh, and that in conflict with government regulations. And yeah. how can you have something that is uncontrollable, ungovernable, and yet at the same time becomes a digital gold standard for the world? So if you just want to read a little bit more about that, check out my blog. Um, but apart from that, Cage, Mr. G. I think this was a, a great uh, rundown. Um, was, yeah. Uh, you know, this is another talk from the Bitcoin Nashville conference that we decided to cover there. I wanted to tackle the, the main honchos. And uh, I also want to make an announcement. Oh, yeah? Uh, next week, the next show, we're going to have something different here. This is something we wanted to do. We're going to have our first guest on oh, yeah. the program. Oh, yeah? Uh, we're going to be interviewing Brett Banfi from the Bitcoin Association. He is the Bitcoin uh, community, the BSV community. Is he community, community leader? The community manager. Manager, so yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he's very interesting. He's always involved a lot at the different events that are being held around the world. Cool guy, yeah, <laughs> super cool guy. And yeah. uh, we're going to get some of his insight. Uh, what's happening at the Bitcoin Association? It's a very important organization because, again, you know, one of their fundamental responsibilities is to make sure that uh, Bitcoin remains a fixed protocol. Big time, yeah. It's there for education. There's the BSV Academy. They are putting information out there for people to understand Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And also they have a lot of companies listed that yeah. are using Bitcoin SV to do all sorts of interesting things. It's a real community now. Yes. <laughs> it's and existing. Exactly. And so we're very excited. So if you want to hear from Brett Banfrey next week, then tune into the Sempi Show and I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Should be. Other than that, Cage, I want to thank you for a great uh, conversation. It's around. only a pleasure, Mr. G. You know I enjoy this. Yeah, same yeah. here. Uh, it's great to be here, and I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Saint B Show. Please come back soon. Smash. Bam. Okay, can it? Put it in the can. Cook it. Eat it. Digest it. Move on. Next meal.